This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Thousand and One Movies podcast, based on the book A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. This week, we'll be talking about Victor Ariche's 1973 Spanish classic, The Spirit of the Beehive. This episode marks the conclusion of Season 3 of the podcast, and it'll be at least a few weeks before Season 4 begins. In the meantime, I hope you've been enjoying this foray into some of the mostly lesser-known bits of cinema chosen from the book, and if you have, I must ask for your support. Leave a nice little review on iTunes. Even a star rating will be fine. It will make my mind rest easy about people actually downloading and listening, and it'll help others find the podcast in iTunes. Now... On to the film. Director Victor Ariche and producer Elias Cuijeta met in 1969 while the two were working on an episode for a short-lived television show in Spain called The Challenges. Their work was just a paycheck at this point, but the two slowly developed a friendship and, before long, learned that they shared an obsession with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, both the novel and the various adaptations of it on film. It was inevitable that the two should make a film together, and they knew it should be some iteration of their favorite horror story. They knew that, despite it being highly marketable, a horror film was out of the question because the budget would be beyond their means. This was in the area of Hollywood blockbusters like The Exorcist, and long before The Blair Witch Project, when it was proven that you didn't need a big budget to thrill audiences. With the help of screenwriter Angel Fernandez Santos, Ariche created a story with its frames set in current times, then 1972, about a 33-year-old woman who, upon hearing that her father is on his deathbed, returns to visit him, resulting in a number of flashbacks to experiences of her childhood. If you're wondering what in the world this has to do with Frankenstein, just be patient. This framing story was eventually dropped so that they could simply tell the story of a girl growing up in a tiny Castilian town in the early 1940s. This was a time the filmmakers wanted Spanish audiences to journey back to themselves. Ironically, though, Ariche revisited the theme of the daughter visiting her dying father ten years later in El Sur. Producer Elias Cuijerta was not happy about Ariche and Fernandez Santos dropping the framing story with the 33-year-old main character, and his concern seemed vindicated when practically everyone who read the script failed to understand it, claiming it was nothing more than gibberish. Eventually, of course, the film was made. To understand one interesting aspect of how the film was made, as well as some of its metaphors, one must know the political climate in Spain at the time. By 1973, the country was still under the thumb of General Franco's dictatorship as a result of the Spanish Civil War 40 years earlier. Censorship was stringent with all forms of art, and many films were turned down by the government after a lengthy waiting period for being too overtly leftist. Beginning in the 1950s with films like Death of a Cyclist, filmmakers learned that if they were to have any kind of artistic freedom when it came to political expression, it would have to be in the form of metaphors and subtext. This was done all the way through the 1970s, and the spirit of the beehive is no exception. The film is about young Anna, who is, if I had to guess, about six years old, who lives with her parents and older sister in a tiny Castilian town. In the beginning, we see the two girls entranced by a screening of James Whale's Frankenstein at the town hall. We also know that their father's hobby is beekeeping, and their mother writes letters to an unknown lover. This is pretty much all we ever learn of the two parents. Anna's fascination with Frankenstein's creature leads to her befriending a freedom fighter who takes shelter in a nearby abandoned house, a place Anna's sister tells her is the home of the spirit of Frankenstein's creation. Ariche was inspired by the silent films of Murnau and the Lumiere brothers, and initially intended to shoot the film in black and white in the visual style of silent movies. 
This, however, proved too costly and time-consuming, and the movie was eventually made in color. This allowed him more room to play with the visuals, and I think it worked well. The film was, for the most part, light, highly praised at its release. In 1996, it was named one of the three best Spanish films ever made by critics in a poll taken for the centennial of Spanish cinema. Victor Ariche went on to make only three more films, El Sur in 1983, a documentary entitled The Quince Treason in 1992, and something called Correspondence in 2016. IMDb remains cryptic on the details of this last one. The Spirit of the Beehive was just the beginning of its young lead actress, Anna Torrent, who would go on to become one of the most famous actresses in Spanish film and television. She continues working to this day. What did I think of The Spirit of the Beehive? In the somewhat enlightening documentary contained in the supplements of the Criterion Collection DVD, the actress who played the mother explains that when she asked Ariche what she was to be thinking in certain scenes, he would just tell her to think of nothing. As a result, the film consists of a series of scenes, called Emotional Pockets by one critic, containing characters who stare expressionlessly off-screen. If this doesn't sound interesting to you, then this film probably isn't going to be for you. I say this because this film clearly isn't for me. I trust that you already know that I enjoy putting the pieces together in complex films, but when it comes to what looks like emotionless ghosts haunting the spaces on screen, I just don't buy it. I missed the train on this one. The spirit of the beehive is bloodless, leaving me wanting my 99 minutes back. In his four-star review of the film, Roger Ebert wrote that the film is about the wonders of the world as seen through the eyes of a curious and imaginative child, yet he refused to comment about the political metaphors the filmmakers had snuck past the censors, stating his article would seem less like an article and more like a term paper. I agree that Anna's imagination drives the story. In one scene, she hallucinates a scene with Frankenstein's monster, not unlike that in the film in which the creature meets and then accidentally kills a little girl. But I think the political metaphors are much more fun. Let me rephrase that. Much more interesting. The strange, empty house in which the family lives is meant to represent the seclusion of Spain during the Franco regime. The house's honeycombed windows, which lit through a golden honey light, are meant to convey the feeling that the house is itself a beehive like the one which the father obsesses over. The mother and father, who have only one short scene together, barely speak to each other and float about the house like ghosts. The two girls are incapable of realizing that their parents' relationship is on the rocks and cavort innocently about the house and the deserted countryside. Of course, they aren't just ignorant of their parents' predicament, but also the dictatorial situation under which they live. There are people that love this film. There are people who see things in it that I cannot. I tried with this film, but at the end of the day, it seemed to me less like a film about a girl's imagination and more like a series of shots of people with vacant expressions moving from scene to scene, like first graders blocking a school play. If you want to see a great Spanish film about a girl's imagination, I suggest you try Pan's Labyrinth. Now, there is one thing that I should add. The Criterion Collection released this on DVD in 2006, but have not, as of this recording, made it available on Blu-ray. This is a shame, as the film has lots of colorful visuals that would come out beautifully in high definition. Somebody should get on that. That's all I have to say about The Spirit of the Beehive. I'll be going away for a while, but keep your ears peeled for Season 4, which will open with a discussion of Italian director Francesco Rossi's 1979 film, Christ Stopped at Eboli. In the meantime, feel free to email me any questions or comments at 1001moviespodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at 1001moviespc and look for the podcast's Facebook page. Until next time, happy viewing.